Welcome to our podcast, Charting the Course, presented by Emmanuel Church Apostolic Community. Our podcast will be presented by gifted teachers that are called, anointed, and appointed to expound upon the Word of God. We will be discussing various topics that are relevant to living a holy life today according to the Word. Hello, I'm Patricia Gray, and I'm here with Robert Thomas, and we are charting the course. Today we're going to be talking again about understanding end times, speaking in regards to um, symbolism of prophecy. Mm -hmm. On our last episode, we were talking about the four great beasts. And in that, you were speaking to us and explaining why the four great beasts um, and the meanings of it related to Daniel and Revelations. Today, I'd like for you to talk about it more in regards to helping us understand eschatology and going forward in reference to the last day. Why does these symbols that are used continue to be so easily misconstrued by the church or in the church? All right. Well, the saints um, today in the church, the saints, um, they got to get used to the terminology for one thing. Um, the terminology of the end times is all found all in, t- all in the books of the Old Testament prophets. Um, even in the New Testament books, some of the New Testament, Paul talks a, a lot about um, what's going to happen in the last days um, and uh, about the, uh, the, the, the rapture of the church, the first resurrection and uh, revelation, books like, books like that. Um, but the terminology isn't heard in the church too much today. Um, you hear prosperity preaching, you hear uh, uh, topics about this and that, um, different stories of the Bible when we teach on them, Sunday school, Bible studies like that, and preached on Sunday mornings. And But you hardly hear that terminology about the end times. So that's one um, big thing right there. Uh, another thing is the emphasis, the emphasis is, is, is not placed on the subject matter anymore as far as the end times. It's not placed on the subject matter um, too much today, but that's something that we, we need to get get back into the church. Um, some leaders are out here now, the church leaders, pastors, they're not talking about the subject. They, they won't preach on it or they won't teach it because they're intimidated by the subject um, for one, and maybe they, they, a lot of them not knowledgeable of it themselves. So um, they don't understand it. So they just don't teach it. And the saints themselves are saying, um, there's no use for it. You know, you're not going to go to heaven or hell because you don't know it. But it is relevant today that we, we, we start talking about these things and teaching them more. So. Okay. So in the second chapter of the book of Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar mm-hmm. was troubled by a dream of the great image that was standing before him. What is the significance of the head of that image that was in King Nebuchadnezzar's dream? All right, this is, this is something about the end times also. Um, it was God's way of, of, of giving, he gave him a dream. God gave the dream, he authored the dream for King Nebuchadnezzar. And we know King Nebuchadnezzar is the Babylonian king, um, Old Testament, and Daniel, and and Israel themselves, was, was the, they were the captives over there um, for 70 years. Mm-hmm. And, and so this great image that he had a dream of, Daniel had to interpret it for him. Mm-hmm. And uh, it troubled um, the king. So um, when God gave Daniel the revelation of what, 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 what the dream meant, he had to tell the king. And so that great head, that great head meant um, it was a golden head on this great image that was standing before the king in the dream. And he didn't know what it means. So meant so. Daniel told him what God showed him. So it meant that he was that head. Um, when you read in the second chapter of Daniel, um, verses 30, 31, I believe it starts there all the way through uh, 40, uh, you'll see uh, the scenario, that whole scenario. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's explaining the dream to uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. And it goes all into the details and stuff like that. So uh, that head was absolutely uh, represented the uh, kingdom of Babylon. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. 
How does the rest of those great images um, reveal anything about human government? Um, well, we know the golden head, like I just said, uh, it was 2 and 38, Daniel 2 and 38. Um, it represents Nebuchadnezzar's uh, kingdom, Babylon. And this is what God was showing him with that image. It was an image of a great statue. Of a, it, it was in the form of a man, but, and it, and, but it didn't look like a man, man. But it, it, was just a, it was just an awesome image to him when he seen it. And so uh, the head was here. And you can see that Daniel 2 and 38, and then 2 and 32, um, you'll see um, it goes down to the, the, the breast and the arms. Um, Daniel was explaining this to the, to the king. They said the breast and the arms of silver, that was media, that, that represented media and media and Persia. Okay. So that's two uh, different governments right there that were going to succeed. They were going to be successive uh, governments following Nebuchadnezzar's, because um, he was God was showing Nebuchadnezzar the rise and the fall of human government, okay. all the way up to our day and past our day, mm -hmm. and 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 so so that's two of them right there. And then you go down um, in the same verse two and thirty eight, and Daniel talks about the the, uh, the belly and the thighs of brass. That's uh, represents Greece, and then it goes down to the to the legs of iron, and that represented the Roman Empire. But the fourth the fourth part of it of the image, it talks about the toes, the mm -hmm. feet and the toes made of clay and iron mixed together. You know they don't mix, mm -mm. and so it was easy to break that. It was very brittle. So all of that stuff plays into this this end time prophecy. But that right there about the toes. That right there talks about a government that hadn't even come yet. Mm -hmm. This is talking about the last uh, kingdom and that that antichrist that's coming. Okay. That Revelation talks about. And when you say it's even affected, it's even um, prevalent to us today. That these images. Mm -hmm. So all of these images are still represented today in what's going on in our in our government now. Well. The, the human government, because God is going to set up a government, mm -hmm. his, his government. We know, and Isaiah talks about the government should be upon his shoulders. Mm -hmm. That was some of the prophecy, the end time prophecy right there. Um, but the, this human government has to come to an end. Okay. And so this is what he was showing Nebuchadnezzar. He showed him the history, if you will, the history of human government from Nebuchadnezzar's um, time, and beyond his time, mm -hmm. all the way up to today. So these right here that we're reading of in Daniel, these have all passed. The media Persia, um, Babylonian, the Greece, um, the Roman Empire, but the fourth one that I sp spoke about okay. with the toes and, and the iron and clay, um, that, that, that has yet, yet to come. Right. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about that last, that last and final Antichrist. Okay. So that, that hadn't come yet. All right. All right. When we read 2 and 34 of the book of Daniel, it speaks of a stone. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands. Yes. Does that stone signify anything about the end time? Oh, yeah. That stone, that, uh, that stone represents, absolutely represents Christ. And um, when you read in Daniel, you read the whole chapter, mm. um, chapter 2 of, of Daniel. Um, He's, as, as he's interpreting, this is part of the interpretation that Daniel was given to uh, giving King Nebuchadnezzar about the dream. Okay. This was the last part of that dream as a stone was hewn out of a mountain. Mm. And, and it was it, it, and what it represents when you read all of, all of that verse um, is, is, is talking about the destruction of human government, okay. the ending of human government by this stone, but that stone is Christ. Mm -hmm. And so, and, it, and because it says in the scripture, that same scripture in Daniel, that same chapter, it goes into, it was made without hands. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a kingdom made without hands. So it's his government that the Isaiah spoke of. And so when, when, when that stone comes and breaks that image down that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed about, then that's the end of, of that human government. And it's time for Christ to reign in okay. that thousand year millennial reign. So it's talking about Christ's second coming and it's talking about his government and how he's going to rule. Mm -hmm. So we can go further in detail, but we, 
you know, right. it's a lot to it. But Understandable. All right. Um, in the first question, you were talking um, to us, and I thank you that you shared these with us, and also to let us know that the images that were represented, that final um, representation is still um, to come, and that's beneficial for us. Um, I do thank you today for you um, coming and speaking to us about understanding the um, end times and the symbolism of prophecy. Um, definitely we need to know what's coming and we have yeah. to know it according to the word and we have to truly understand those things that are past and those things that are the future that are to come so we can prepare for it so we won't That's be right. caught unaware. Um, I thank you for joining us today with Charting the Course. I am Patricia Gray and this is Robert Thomas. Please continue to send in your questions and your comments so that we may be able to address those yeah. um, topics. We are Charting the Course. Thank you. All right. Thank you for tuning in today to our Charting the Course podcast segment. We welcome your comments, questions, or any topics you would like to have answers to. Join us next time as we continue to chart the course according to the Word of God.